Okay, now um, this is why this is a three mark question, right? At this point, I need to break out and deal with these partial fractions somehow. And um, we've, we've shown how to do partial fractions in a variety of ways before, um, but this particular one um, is a technique I, I don't usually do, I don't frequently do, so that's why I think it's worth me sort of um, spending some time on, right? Rather than sort of designate, okay, here's my two separate fractions and call it like A is the, co is the numerator for one, B is the, co the numerator for another. You can do it that way if you like. But because of how simple this term is, like there's nothing much happening on that numerator, right? I'm going to do it a slightly, um, it's a slightly sneaky way, but it actually works out very simple for us, right? What I'm going to do is just consider, I'm just going to have a, an educated stab in the dark of what happens when I just have the simplest version of each of these denominators on the sorry, each of these factors on the denominators, which is like so, right? What will happen if they're both one and one? Um, you can see here, and this is why difference of squares is kind of an unusual situation that allows us to take advantage of the symmetry I was mentioning before, right? Um, when you put together, when you sort of like inverted commas, cross multiply, right, to get the common denominator, you get VT plus V on one side, and then I'll put that in brackets, and then you get VT minus V on the other. Right, and then this puts us on the um, common denominator, which we just get by multiplying through. But hold up, right? You can see these V terms are just gonna cancel, right? Um, this and this, um, they disappear. So therefore what you're getting is two VT on the numerator up there. Now, this is great because it's just a constant coefficient and I can divide or multiply through by constant coefficients on the inside um, so long as I do that on the outside of the integrand and everything is fine, right? So what I would conclude is um, that if this one on um, VT minus V plus one on VT plus V, if that's equal to this, I actually don't want this, I want it um, but smaller by a factor of 2vt. So I just need to divide through by that, right? So I'm going to say here, therefore, um, if I divide through by 1 uh, or by 2vt, rather, that gives me a 1 on the numerator, a vt minus v, vt plus v on the denominator. And if I divide through the right-hand side, here by 2vt, I just have to divide this left-hand side by 2vt. So let's write it like so. Divide through by 2vt, and then what you've got on the inside is these two separate factions, right? vt minus v, vt plus v, right there, okay? So you can see this, this here is what appears in my integrand, right? So I just need to be, um, I just need to introduce this factor of one on 2vt in there. So are you ready? Let's do that. Um, I'm gonna have this vt squared on g, hanging out the front. And then um, I can say this is from V naught to V, and I'm just doing a straight substitution of this into this right-hand side, right? So this is gonna be one on two VT. Um, and if you're paying close attention to that result we're trying to prove, this is a really good sign, you'll see why in a second. Uh, and then we get our pair of partial fractions here. One on VT minus V, one on VT plus V, or with respect to V, okay. So as I mentioned before, if you're paying attention, you're like, oh, hold on a second. This VT here will cancel with one of the VTs up here. And then you've got this two hanging out here, which is on the denominator. So if you look, just let me scroll back up. You're like, hey, that looks familiar. There's a 2G on that denominator there. So you're like, oh, I'm actually finally getting towards what I wanted to. And that's why this mysteriously appears down the bottom, okay? So um, my constant coefficient is pretty much exactly what I need it to be. It's gonna be VT, one of them canceled, all over 2G. Um, and now we're ready to actually do the integration, okay? Just be a little bit cautious. Let me do some highlighting here just to make clear what's going on. Um, you've got this term out the front here, right? Now it's gonna be a log, but because in the denominator you've got a minus V, it's not just a regular log, it's gonna be a negative log, right? Um, and we'll deal with absolute value signs and why I'm about to not write them and they don't appear in the result you're required to prove. I'll get to that in a second. Um, and then you've got this second um, term here, which is, it's not so bad. It's kind of like, oh, that's just a regular log term. You've got a plus V there down the bottom. So um, I won't need to worry about pluses, positives and negatives too much, okay? So I'm just gonna keep those, I'm gonna retain those colors, blue and green, so you can see me doing this all the way through, right? For starters, like I, like I promised, there's a negative log term hanging out the front here, and it's a VT minus V on the inside. And then next, you've got this more, um, more normal log term, log of VT plus V on the right-hand part of this, and that's gonna go from V naught 
to V, okay? Following so far. Uh, good thing I put that in a separate color, but let me just shove it over so it's not interrupting our integration. There we go, that's enough space, okay. So we've got that, now I'm ready to actually substitute my um, upper and lower bounds, but just be cautious here because there's a lot happening here, especially with your um, negative signs as well. So VT on 2G remains on the outside, and then uh, big brackets here. Okay, let's do um, upper and lower bound for the green, uh, uh, rather, let's do the, uh, the lower bound and the upper bound into the green and the blue, but let's just watch out for which one's which, okay? Um, because this term here is actually positive, I'm going to put it first, um, so don't get confused by that. Here comes log of uh, VT plus V, so that's it, that's the upper boundary. Remember, it's just V being substituted into V. I, I usually try and avoid that, but anyway, hopefully you're following along okay. Uh, and then here comes that uh, next term, which is negative log of VT minus V. Okay, that V there goes into that V there, all good so far. And now here comes V naught, so you can see I'm going to have to subtract everything for this lower bound, uh, and then I put in log of VT plus V naught, there's that substitution, and minus log of VT minus V naught, again, for the end there, right? But you just have to watch out for all those, um, you can see there's double negatives going on, which is going to be a little bit confusing, okay? So hopefully you're following. You can see um, which terms are going to be positive and which terms are going to be negative. Well, if I highlight this one, this one here is positive, and then this one here will become positive because of the double negative, right? So therefore, in my log terms, and remember this is a result I need to prove, so I'm just going to show this extra line of working. Um, I'm going to have, uh, big brackets here, log of VT plus V plus log of VT minus V zero. Okay, so that's, uh, that's gonna form the numerator of my, my grand big um, log term in a second. So this is out the front, and then what are the negative ones, right? Well, I'll have minus log of um, VT minus V, which I got from this green term right here, and then I'll also have minus log of VT plus V zero and that's from this blue one in here which attaches this minus sign. So I'm pretty much there. I think that's a sufficient argument to get to now. The final line will be um, the one that I was asked to prove which is T equals, here comes the constant coefficient that's just been patiently hanging out there, and then the log, and then all of these, look closely, right? These two will end up on the numerator. So VT plus V, VT minus V zero, all divided through, by um, VT minus V and VT plus V zero, as required. So I'll just sort of tie that up in a neat bow. So I know some of you had trouble with that part two there, and I hope you can see how I saw my way through that, um, that partial fractions trick, maybe that was the thing which you were like, oh, I've not seen that done in that way before, uh, but now you have, so hopefully you have that extra tool in your toolbox, so you just needed a refresher on it, okay? Now I promised that I would make a quick comment about what's going on with absolute value signs. Normally you integrate with a log and you're like log of absolute value of whatever, okay? Now the reason why I haven't put of absolute value signs nor has the question in the result that's required to prove is just think about this scenario, right? This is to do, this is like forget about all of the um, calculus for a moment. This is a vertical resisted motion situation and so you're, you're dropping here and so your velocity is always going to be positive. Now that tells you a lot about where the signs are going to go here in terms of say for example um, here and here. Um, the only thing you need to worry about is will your terminal velocity, like how does it relate to your initial velocity, um, which one is larger? Because you can actually, um, as you're about to see in part three, you could pull your shoot um, very conservatively. You're like, I I haven't sped up very much, um, and so I haven't, um, you know, I'm going at a velocity less than the terminal velocity. So even after I've pulled my parachute, I'm still going to keep on speeding up because I haven't reached terminal velocity yet. Or alternatively, your initial velocity might be very fast. Maybe you're doing one of those halo jumps, high altitude, low opening. So you pick up a lot of speed. You, are, you have um, exceeded the parachute's terminal velocity because you haven't opened the parachute yet. 
but then you open the parachute and that slows you down, right? So therefore there's a relationship going on between, uh, particularly up here, this VT minus V0. Um, this can be positive or negative depending on whether um, your initial velocity is above your terminal velocity or not and you're gonna slow down to get down to the terminal velocity. Um, but whether that's positive or negative, you can see that's going to um, change based on this VT minus V. If you get a negative up here, um, then this will also be negative because your V at any given time will be greater than VT. So therefore, if this is negative, um, so will this be and they cancel out. And that's why I'm not putting any absolute value signs and the question doesn't either. Okay. Um, and so uh, I know I've seen in the comments, um, some people direct message me. Um, if you don't do it this way with a definite integral, like I said, you can you end up with a constant um, of integration which you have to deal with. It's just a bit of a disaster, right? Um, it's very hard to work with and disentangle that constant of integration. It's much easier. Um, this is one of the reasons why the definite integral is a great tool to have up your sleeve. 